YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, my name is Allie D'Andrea. I don't know why I bit my lip when I said that. Ah! Tonight is going to be my first archery sit in Pennsylvania. And it's a very good first sit. Like the weather conditions have really come together, I think, hopefully, to make tonight really, really great. I checked hunt wise. Take a look at this. This is like everything that you could ever want. Uh-huh. The updated HuntWise HuntCast is so good. It makes it so easy to understand. It's really helped me focus in on days that are good. So there's this saying like hunt smarter, not harder, which is, it's annoying. I don't know why. That's an annoying thing to say, but I really feel like HuntWise helps me hunt smarter because it just, it puts all the things that you know intuitively about whitetail movement, like a big temperature drop is going to be really good for deer movement amongst a lot of other things, but it just puts it all together without even having to think about it. I can look and be like, okay, Thursday night's my day. Friday's my day. Like Friday's looking really good. So anyway, uh, I'm also in the process of cooking in the middle of us, like trying to get ready to go hunt. I'm going to test out two different jerky recipes and see which one we like better. But I need to pack. But first, say hi. Look at the little love. Hi, baby. We went on a little squirrel hunt yesterday together and we did not find any squirrels, but she was so sweet. She really is like just a mature girl. Huh. All right, here's all the stuff. I've got to fit my saddle gear into my pack. This pack is really cool in that you can haul meat with it, um, but it's really small at the same time, which is why I love it for the whitetail woods. It's not as robust as my Western packs, but it's it's just the right amount of robustness that I need where we're at because we have to pack out animals sometimes. So it's got a meat shelf and the inside of the meat shelf is disgusting. It's It literally still has bear fat on it and we washed it and like rinsed it but i never actually like scrubbed it how disgusting am i i just like expose how disgusting i am this meat shelf however it's not only good for packing meat it's good for packing my saddle gear so i can put all my sticks in the meat shelf I have like 30 minutes to get all of this stuff together and it's my first sit so I don't have anything ready. Take my stick. In the past, Nick and I have been using literally yoga straps that <laughs> we bought like on Amazon, which work for like 10 bucks. They're actually, they work and they're really good for dragging deer out. We've used them for dragging deer out multiple times, but this is designed specifically for saddle hunting. Well, I should say it specifically for going on climbing sticks. But look at that. You go boink. Boink. <laughs> All right, we've got the sticks. It looks so ridiculous, but I promise it's, it makes sense. Got to get my license, my bow, my release. My bow setup is the same setup that I've had for, this is my third season with it the same way. And oh, damn, this isn't done. And my saddle setup has been, I think, essentially the same for the past like three years. So even though like tonight's my first sit of the season and I'm a little bit chaotic, a lot of things are also still the same. And I'm going to a spot that I'm familiar with. So, you know, it's exciting.
Nick came in here the other day and hung a trail camera. And while he was in here, he said he noticed that the scrape had been hit. The leaves right now are unreal. This is a very magical time to be in the woods. In the hardwoods, the acorns are everywhere. And there are some spots where there are more acorns than others, but really, like, I went on a walk with Abby, acorns everywhere. Hunting here today, acorns everywhere. It just doesn't feel like the acorns are enough to be narrowing down where the deer are. It's a great sign, but I feel like once you find acorns, you need to find other sign on top of that. You need to find beech nuts. You need to find hickory nuts. You need to find scrapes, rubs, beds. Like if I was doe hunting, I would be looking for doe beds. I feel like that's the easiest way to like find the does is like you find the beds and then you find the does. With bucks, I feel like it's a little bit harder because typically the buck beds are in a spot that are just so like they are so smart. They'll be on a spot, on a point where the wind is blowing in their face the entire day and nothing can come from behind because there's a steep cliff behind them or, you know, just like something like that. They are just so good at finding really good spots to bed. I'm also not after antlers. Of course, I think antlers are cool and I think killing bucks is cool, but really, I just want to be able to hunt in a cool spot that means something to me that like I found or discovered for myself or whatever. And then I want to have an experience killing an animal there and then butchering it, processing it, eating it. Like that's what I love about all of this. That's like the creme de la creme of what I love about this. Now, don't get me wrong guided hunts on private land are a lot of fun. Private land hunts with your friends are a lot of fun. Hunting a spot on public land that your friend gave to you or like a spot that Nick is like, hey, you should try this spot. Fun. But the funnest is when I find it myself. I experience it myself. I explore it myself. I do it myself. I feel like that quality in myself carries over into everything that I do. And so much so that like, I don't want other people doing things for me. Why am I talking about this right now? The real reason why I even started talking to the camera was because I had the temptation to get down and look for a new spot so that when I want to come back here, I can just like already have my tree picked out. But then I realized, why would you do that before the sign explosion has occurred? Like, just come back whenever there is the potential for a lot of sign to actually be here. Because Nick said that he thought they were hitting that scrape, but I do not think so. And it did rain this morning, and the leaves have been falling, so that might be why it looks a little covered up and untouched. But um, also, it might just be untouched from last year. I don't know. I normally like to eat these ones for breakfast, but don't mind if I do. For lunch and dinner.
here. I just found it while I was taking a break. Still a couple of hairs in it. Acorns in it. Old rub. I was just taking a break so I didn't sweat too bad and just stumbled on this. But that's a good sign. Oh yeah, there's another fresh rub right down there. Acorns are back. The deer are back. That's a good sign. I just got to my spot. The wind's going that way, which is good. I'm set up in a pretty good spot where I can shoot about 30 yards. The hard part is they're going to be above me, so they're going to kind of be like not eye level, but. I didn't really gain as much height as it looks because they're going to be above me, hopefully. If they're below me, I'm screwed. It's windy and cold front's coming in. I have to sit really, really still. Because by the time I see something, it's going to be 30 yards away. Drawing my bow is going to be hard. Too bright than not bright enough, but like, look at that. Pitch black. Wow, daytime. How cool is that little deer? He was so fun. I'm really excited to hear about Nick's hunt. That freaked me out. I need a quick break. How are ya? Whooped. I feel like my eyeballs have been really <laughs> like swollen shut. <laughs> Cereal with <laughs> strawberry protein powder for breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. in the five o'clock hour. It's bright and early. This morning is supposed to be so good. Let's take a look at the temperature. All right, right now it's 35 degrees outside. It says it feels like 33. It definitely feels like it can snow. The plan is to get into the woods and be completely set up while it is still pitch black dark. The spot that we're going to I feel like the deer always get there early. In the morning, there have been many times where I have been in the middle of setting up my saddle setup or like in the middle of climbing into my tree stand and there are deer walking by. <laughs> Why not? Ready. We you hand me that back right there?
There's a big swamp thicket in front of us here. I anticipate the deer coming up out of that swamp to eat the acorns. Wind's going that way, pretty harsh angle, so I think that should be okay. Just missed a doe. Came from the exact opposite area that I would expect her to come from. Straight downwind. I thought she was at 30. She was at 25. And when I shot, she ducked. I swear she like hit the ground. And my arrow just went barely right over her back. It was a perfect shot, but my pin was at 30. Afterwards, I ranged the shot. It was at 25, so that didn't help. But she ducked and just perfect quartering away. Went right over her back. Oh well. At least I didn't wound her. Still frustrating, but I'll go home, shoot my bow, make sure everything's good and functioning well. Check out what I've been cooking on. I have a roast going, a little pot roast. Ah, looking fabulous, smelling fabulous. That won't be done for a couple more hours. I'm about to throw some jerky on the smoker. Marta is on her way over. Our friend Nicole may be coming as well. Muzzle loader opens tomorrow morning. Whichever one turns out best has potential to be in my cookbook. It smells good, it looks good, and I've got high hopes for this. Nick and I are about to head out for another night of our tree hunting. <laughs> We're still in the last little bit of this cold front, so Hopefully the deer will be moving. Nick went out hunting this morning and you didn't actually see anything though, right? Yeah, I had a spike following me around. Oh. In the light? No, the dark. He literally followed me in my tree. But he did see a lot of scrapes, a lot of rubs. So, that's good news. And him and I are hunting together tonight. Bears and bugs. Nice. You need a little extra right there. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my god. Oh, it's a little dried on the outside. But still. That's so disgusting. I'm putting it right now. I think that's awesome. some bear shit. There are a lot of runs. And we're walking through a little thicket on our way to the spot. I don't know what switched, but I came through here on Saturday and it was look at the rub right there. It's insane. It was dead on Saturday. There wasn't a rub. There wasn't a scrape. There wasn't bear shit. No, it's everywhere. The wind is in our face too.
saw them bust you. I was literally pulling my bow in the tree. Yeah. They got my wind. They didn't get my bow. Oh. They were like 200 yards away from me. Two more doe came in over here right before I wanted to come down. I had already taken my release off because I was like, I can't shoot anything. I can't see. But I wanted to wait another minute because I like thought I heard some crunching. They came back again at like 20 yards. And at first I didn't know what they were. But then because there were two of them, and I was like, those are those does. A couple minutes or maybe like a minute after they walked by, big crash. And then another deer was right there. But that one was maybe at like 40 yards. 